essentially taking a gene out of one organism, putting it into another organism. And with the plant biotechnology, this is somewhat less advanced, I would say, than with mammalian systems. And so the process is quite random, the gene insertion sites and whatever can cause you know, different types of damage, and it's completely different than the natural uh, process. It's, uh, people have argued that it's a way to speed up things and so on, but the technology and the way it's done, you know, the, and the uh, possibilities for off-target effects are, are there. And the question has been, you know, the safety issue. And so my point and what I've tried to make over the years I've been involved in this is that problem with the genetically modified organisms is not the technology itself. I'm, you know, we work in this in mammalian systems and I think the technology will eventually be good enough in the plant systems where this can be done in a, in a reasonably safe, directed way. But right now, everything that's out there is not done that way and there are all sorts of potential problems. And the major issue I think is the safety testing issue. And there's this illusion that one of the people in the, the anti-37 the said, well, this is tested by the FDA and it's proof safe and so on. And this, that's simply not true. I mean, there's no required safety testing at all for any of these organisms by the FDA. The EPA handles some uh, pesticides and so on, but the safety testing is very minimal. And, um, and the, Argument. The other argument is that you know, it's been out there for 10 or 15 years that nobody's dying like flies. But that's a not, again, a argument which is simply not valid. There's no way to, there's no epidemiology, there's no way really to assay whether it's safe or not safe. And so essentially the argument that you were, you know, population is being experimented on is in, in some respects very true because there's no safety testing requirements. There are no assays for post-release, and this stuff is being pushed very heavily by the biotech companies, and um, it's just a cause of concern, and it could be slowed down, there could be proper safety testing, and that's, you know, it's, it's a very- Have there been any long-term human studies here no. in the United States? No, there's not been any long-term studies in humans, or not even short-term studies in humans at all. And this is a very contentious issue. There have been a lot of studies in animals, and I, there are dozens of them, not more. And the, the results are not you know, outstanding for short-term studies, but recently there was a study in France by Saralini, a, a scientist who's been interested in this for a long-term study basically a, a study um, that lasts the lifetime of a rat. And there he found that there were a lot more tumors in, in caused by not only the, the type of corn, but also what worries me the most actually is the herbicides that are used. And that's a whole other sort of discussion with the herbicide because that's increased enormously with the, at the end of the, the um, herbicide resistant crops. And so that study has been a big fight last month, to put mildly, because it's really the first long-term study that's been done. And it's been criticized by the European Food Safety uh, Assurance uh, Organization. It's been criticized by all the biotech people. And their criticisms, I've been asked to look at the paper and, and make comments on it and on the, on the critiques and they're just not valid. I mean they